Oh my God, I am one with the force, and the force is with me, and it is also with you. If it's Monday, then it must be time for Riley's Cantina. This is a show that celebrates Star Wars, a galaxy far, far away, and does it with wine. And this week, of course, I'm welcoming back my good friend and yours, my one of my favorite people in the world, the author of Why We Love Star Wars, my friend, Ken Knapsack. How are you? Oh, Cheers, buddy. Mark Riley, I've got what's called wine whiskey. Uh, wine whiskey. I yeah. love that you're pouring the whiskey. I'm pouring the wine. Just the uh, clinkity clink through the internet to you, my friend. Welcome to Riley's Cantina as well as welcome to all of you joining right now. It is so good to have you here celebrating the greatest story ever told. For me, that is. And that is the Star Wars story. And with Ken Knapsack, anything is possible when we're sitting down and drinks are to be had. All of you joining here, thank you. My new studio is finally set up, looking that way. I'm almost there, Ken, and I'm going to finally sip. This was the last glass of wine that we had from a bottle that we uh, we didn't even finish last night, Ken. Can you believe it? Uh, the future Rileys didn't even finish a freaking bottle of wine last night. That's great. Roger, Roger. Mm. Please do that throughout the show, and I will do this. <laughs> I've been annoyed. Uh, we, 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 I debuted some on Force Center. It's the Star Wars app. It has a soundboard, and you can just. I, I just. Heavens in the Force. It's, it's annoying. You know but, what? Obi Wan felt that great disturbance, and it was that. <laughs> and it's, it's just back and forth, back and forth. We could do this all night, man. I mean, you know, I could do this all night. I don't know what you guys are thinking, but, you know, that's what we do here. It's Riley's Canteen. I'm so glad you guys hit that like button, if you will, and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. I'm so excited to welcome Ken back. When we get together and talk Star Wars, it's a lot of fun. So first off the bat, you guys up there on the Patreon page, Riley Roundtable. Go to patreon.com slash Riley Roundtable. I post the uh, show right there. Patreon, uh, put those uh, comments in there now. I will get to them first. We're going to be talking about your questions, of course. Streamlabs.com slash Mark Riley. You can get those in there as well. Halfway through the show, send them to me and Ken. We'll start opening up those questions to you, all of you. Talk about it. But first off, Ken. Yeah. We kind of came up with a topic because I, I kind of wanted to talk about this. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, what are we going to talk about, dude? And I And then it occurred to me that... I love myself some Kylo Ren. In fact, he's my favorite character from the uh, the sequel trilogy. And I thought, wouldn't it be fun to talk about the tragic fall of Ben Solo? We're not done yet. Yes. See? And I knew you would say, and he, you texted back, I love it. So salute to Kylo Ren, uh, to Ben Solo. May ye rest in peace. Sorry, spoilers as well, everybody. I'm assuming you've seen The Rise of Skywalker. But Ken Napsok, what is it about Kylo Ren that you like? Or let's, let's start with... Uh, yeah, Kylo Ren, the character, we'll get into Ben Solo and all that kind of stuff. But what is it you like about Kylo Ren? I think for me, it, it, it again, let's always put that out there. For me, the, it might not for be. Me. Yeah, yeah. For me. It might not be for everybody, and I understand that, but that's okay. Um, a very interesting and compelling new Star Wars villain for this new era in which the shadow of what came before was both hanging over the characters and mm. um, and finding our identities outside of that, finding our identities as fan going, fans going forward in this new era, it was just it, it, it intentionally the, the the shot of Ray and Jakku, one of the first things we we saw in that trailer. It's 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 the the graveyard of giants of what we came before, and so Kylo yeah. had to deal with that, and and the son of of legends, uh, the nephew of a legend, and the pressure of that. I always say Kylo reminds me, and I grew up in the church. Kylo reminds me of some of the pastor's children who couldn't take growing up in that environment or with those expectations placed on him and then couldn't uh, separate. That's my dad. He's also the pastor and people look at him a certain way, but I see him on Thursday morning, not just Sunday morning and da, 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 and boom. And they, and they crack from it. Not everyone does, but, but he did. So that's, that's a great starting point for me and, and why yeah. I love him so much. Man. I love it. When you talk star Wars, dude, I could talk to you about star Wars all the time. Kylo Ren for me, man, I just, it, it's just, you learn a little bit more about it in the, in the last Jedi when Luke's telling his story and, and, and kind of seeing the variations of what could have been the final word that is Ben Solo before he falls to Kylo Ren. But I just love that he kept reminding us, Ken, that he, that the light was calling to him and he was really making a point to mm -hmm. go to that darkness and trying to find that darkness. And I just, 
he obviously never fully, I think, got there. And that, to me, was just the complex thing about him. Like, they told you, I was thinking about this the other the other day, Ken, like, in Force Awakens, we're not going through this, like, who's the villain? Like, who's behind the mask? Right. You know, it's like, we hear Kylo Ren. We don't know. We don't know where we are. We're 30 years, 30 plus years later. We meet Ray. We see a, a, an inciting incident of Finn who's, you know, going to leave the First Order and all these different things. But then I remember that gut punch. You're like 20, 25 minutes, almost like 30 minutes in, and they're like, it's Ben Solo. They show their hand right away. So I, f I feel like they were showing us Ben Solo as being like, no, he's going to be like, you know exactly where he comes from. And all that baggage comes with them. And so you're sitting there watching him say the light is calling to him. And, and you know, you, you, you see him as he kills his own father. It's just he became that character for me, just something that was so fascinating. So I'm so glad we have him. I'm so yeah. glad we have him. going going back to The Force Awakens, the idea of of the offspring of one of our heroes or the twins of one of our heroes, obviously yeah. that floats around and that's part of this Skywalker saga and it's generational and, and all those kind of things. And I think no one was really surprised by that, but what I was pleasantly surprised about, I always go to Han Solo, you know, Han Solo is my guy. Han Solo is my Star yeah, Wars. Guy. Yeah. And I keep finding myself more like him as I get older, which isn't always a good thing. And, and one of those things, one of the things I loved is Han Solo the, the big hero, uh, when we find him, he has run away. He's separated yeah. from his wife. He's run away from who he always knew he probably should be. And, and we find him running wrath tars on the ear of Anna and going back to where he started almost, but not in a good way, kind of a sad, pathetic way. And I'm like, that's, that's my hero, right? That's my guy. And it, it, it connected. It just was connected with me on a different level than I expected. And then to have part of that be tied to his son and then, and, and then his son, justifiably being upset at his father and and and, and carrying that right. you know being sad and kind of heartbroken thinking he's gone too far um to ever go back to his mother um but still feeling connected to it the, that's where you start that's where you mm. start and that that to me was just really different than the last scion of the solo skywalker family is going to do bad things because bad things never star wars i always say no don't worry about the how hows and the what's Answer the why. Answer why you would make this choice as, as, as writers, directors, producers, and actors. And, yeah. and that keeps fueling the story of Kylo for me, the why of Kylo. Yeah, I, I, I love it. And we can look too, dude. I mean, we grew up, you know, in the expanded universe of the books that came out. That was our only Star Wars for a while, the Timothy Zahn novels. And, you know, I know they've deemed them legends, but I fell off, uh, you know, late, later on. But I knew the story of Jason Solo. Right. Um, somewhat. So I love that they somewhat cherry picked the idea of a Skywalker offspring falling to the dark side. Right. So great. Put, put that aside. It's the Ben solo brought to life by Adam driver that really just, yeah. Oh man. I, the casting was pitch perfect for me. And I remember going back dude. I remember reading a variety article about Adam driver has been cast as the Darth Vader S character. And I went, what are we doing? This is fascinating to me that it was what like oh, just yeah. to switch over to the to, to the actual Adam Driver actor. Mm -hmm. You know, what is it about him that um, you know, Force Awakens, he seemed pretty whiny, and I I was pretty against him at the time, but it was him doing his job. It was the last Jedi that really filled in the blanks for me with him and kind of cemented him as my favorite in the sequel trilogy. But what is it about uh, Adam Driver that you think uh, was perfect in the casting? Well, going back to the casting news, I was one of many who was like the guy from Girls, like the the, the right. girls. Oh, huh, okay. I was I, I just didn't I didn't know. And he's he's an actor, man, and he is this reputation that he has as being intense and all these kind of things. I, I I've heard him kind of push back against that, but I also at the same time you can't deny it. There there doesn't seem to be a lot of uh, there's Finn. Uh, you know, John Boyega, Daisy Ridley, Oscar Isaac on set, uh, you know, and, and you hear stories and you hear them say, like, Adam was off doing his thing. And yeah. I think Star for Star Wars to have that um, was 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 was, I think, important in this role, because uh, one of my favorite things, the, the revelation he said, and it makes perfect sense when you go watch all these movies, even going back to the first trailer we saw with him in that force with that shot that wasn't used. Oh. The Saber shot um, for him to shot. Say in, in the documentary about uh, Rise of Skywalker, or the Skywalker uh, legacy doc for him to say, like, I am protective over the movements of of Kylo Ren. 
I, I will not let a stuntman do this. No disrespect to them. I'm in control and, and possessive of the movements of this character. Yeah. Every step he takes in Star Wars is fueled by a decision as, as an actor. And uh, all those actors are professional and do that. He just he just approached this character a different way. Then that was that way he was able to tap into that stuff. Uh, Whining Force Awakens. All right, yeah. All right. Fine. And you look. Uh, That's part of it, though. That was part yeah. of, I think, his journey, you know, yeah. as the character. Let's not forget Luke. Tashi Station, Anakin Trader, like correct, it's, yeah, it's Anakin. Up. It's following a long line of Star Wars whiners that I I find refreshing. On, and, on, uh, the, on the boy side, on the boy side of the Sky uh, Skywalker side, uh, correct, Padme, correct. Padme, Leia, Shmi, a little stronger, um, much so, stronger, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, so, anyways, uh, when you know, I go back to that interrogation scene. I wrote about it in, in the book, but that's one of the double interrogation scene, as I call it, where he's got Ray for the first time and he's got his mask on and he's so confident and cocky and he's formed this identity and who he thinks he is. Yeah. And the moment she can connect back into him and, and find his true fears, he's exposed in a way he never expected. And, and, and there that's, that scene builds out their entire relationship and, and it just keeps going back to that. And I and love that connecting. And, and I think that's going to your question about Adam driver. I, I don't need a huge Star Wars fan. I don't need someone. By the way, he does great things with you know with with the character off camera. There's some great stories of him dressing up with the character to make kids happy and, and use the character in that way. Uh, uh, you know, he's got kids. He's he's got he's got, you know, I don't know. He just seems like a really good guy. Got with a lot of integrity and and, and yeah. He uh, anyway, so I'll I'll wrap up with this. He's good. He's so good. He's so good. The the intensity and then you know he can also go. Turn it around, and I, I've seen some of the comments here, mm -hmm. Kyle. SNL Kylo is wonderful. Undercover boss, he goes he goes right there. He does it. He's perfect like that. Taylor, for this, the super chat, I appreciate it. Just wanted to thank both of you guys from the bottom of my heart. Last November, I lost my six-year-old girl. Holy shit, Taylor. Hold on real quick, okay, man? We bonded over Star Wars Hardcore. I was in a dark place. I soon after found the cantina. It truly saved me. More than a movie. Taylor, this is the most wonderful uh, donation I think I've received ever. Um, my heart goes out to you losing your your six year old girl. Uh, my God, man, I, I'm so sorry to hear that. I salute to her and uh, to you. Yeah. Thank you for this and um, that you've come here and said something as nice as this. Uh, I, I'm I'm somewhat speechless, man. I really appreciate that, Ken. Yeah. Uh, I don't yeah. know if you have well, anything to say. Yeah. Yeah, the less I'll say, the lessons of Star Wars go deep, and they go into places you might not expect, Taylor. And I, I'm not going to assume anyone listens to any other shows I'm on, but we we did almost a two hour discussion last week on Force Center on Thursday's episode on on the lessons of letting go in Star Wars, uh, and, and specifically went to uh, one of the moments with with Yoda telling Anakin, "Miss them, do not," and what that meant, and what that meant to um, what could it what it could have meant to Anakin, and what yeah. it maybe should have meant, um, and Point being, there's nothing that can change your experience, uh, Taylor, and, and nothing nothing that can uh, make it feel better. But there's great lessons in this franchise and this saga that can move you and inspire you and find you when you least expect it. So continue your journey, and, and uh, uh, God bless you, man. God bless you. Yeah, God bless you. Thank you for that, man. Uh, uh, thank you for watching as well, and I hope that um, we can keep you smiling. We can keep talking about Star Wars, something that the lessons, as Ken mentioned, it's something that is very powerful. Me, Ken, when you said, you know, Han Solo, you know, you, you start to resemble him later in life. I do the same thing. My boy, Luke Skywalker, mm -hmm. you know, I uh, sometimes I want to run away onto an island and, and, and not look at the bigger picture. And uh, that's why I think Luke was so powerful to me and why I love The Last Jedi so much. But you talk about this loss. It's interesting, dude. Taylor, your your question leading into this conversation that Ken brought up and, and moving on, there was so many things. There's such, that's such an anchor in Star Wars, like Anakin doing it the wrong way. I think he cannot let Tanme go, and it leads to his ultimate downfall as Anakin to Darth Vader. What is it about? I want to talk about this and what you guys think, too. Like Star Wars, the meaning of loss. It's, it, it's a fascinating idea because falling to the dark side, Anakin didn't want to lose Padme. So he falls to the dark side. We learned that in the prequels. And I think that's the story that I love so much that I didn't see those first few times, Ken. Um, really, that what, what Lucas was trying to do. By the way, did you see Ryan Johnson's tweet on what he loves on the prequels? Yeah, a friend of mine uh, tweeted that to me, and I, uh, who's on the outside of Star Wars discussion. He's like, "This, this is what do you think about this? And I was like, this has literally been force center for the last five years. <laughs> like, uh, 
uh, no offense. Like I, it, it sounds, I don't know. Joseph and I are, are very uh, secure of our lack of a place in the Star Wars media world, but <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I hear, I hear yeah. Ron Ryan talk about the prequels. I hear Filoni talk about stuff. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Come over to force center. We're having those discussions because this Star Wars is about the themes. It's always been about the themes first, the fun yeah. stuff, the icing on the cake, the cool speeder bikes. I got a speeder bike toy hanging, right? I'm looking at it right now. Uh, those are the cool things about Star Wars, but that's not where it stops. And, and the lessons are valuable and execution. Sure. There were some things I'd do different in the prequels. Um, George had his pulse on a lot of things then that we're <laughs> seeing now. Um, oh, and, yeah. You know? Yeah. He really, and, and yeah. it's to, 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 to go back to it, you and Joseph Scrimshaw are doing wonderful things on force center. And it's Joseph Scrimshaw when he was a guest and you guys started talking about the prequels. I remember it was when I was living in long beach years ago and I needed podcasts because I was in the car a long time. And you guys talking about the prequels is when I really started. Okay. Yeah, man. And I started looking at them a little differently. You guys really helped in that, in that kind of way. Yeah. And then, yeah, I mean, look, and I've, I've said publicly, Joseph helped me into that, into that way. Yeah. And um, I know, like you know, a lot of people start with the prequels and what is it that, like, what's your entry point of star Wars to me? It doesn't matter. It like it could be the Clone Wars movie that you know I'm I'm not crazy about, but that could be your entry point. It could be Rogue One. It could be the original trilogy. It could be the prequels, and that's what I love. And there's going to be a lot of new people that are coming in with these sequel trilogies. So uh, I want to go to yeah. Uh, I mean, to the entry point conversation, I just had a great conversation with one of our our, our uh, Force Force Center listeners, Mark Canope, uh, over uh, he's overseas, and he. Um, he showed his ten-year-old uh, uh, nephew, a ten-month-old, not ten-month-old nephew. He wanted to get him into Star Wars early, so he showed him some episodes of, of Forces of Destiny, uh, seasons one and two, written by my friend Jen Miro. And, yep, and I was going to bring that up. Yep. And 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 he goes, Ray just pulled him in, captivated ten months. One more of that. That's Star that's, Wars that's are important. That's what got Zoe. Yeah, I she, apparently she was running around with uh, some lightsabers and whatnot, and I was like, what? She, I, I thought she hasn't seen the, the new movies yet. And I was like, no, no, no. She watches Force of, Forces of Destiny. Right. And I went, that's fantastic. You know, and so she's got that. And and I love that. And yeah, sorry to hijack a little bit, but to go back to Kyle's conversation, that was literally how do you deal with the, the shadows of the past, the legacy of the past? And a lot of the characters in, in the sequel trilogy have to deal with that, including those who were part of that previous generation, what they did. One of the most powerful things for me in rise of skywalker which is a deeply spiritual movie uh if, if you if you can connect with it on that level is lando carissian is is my flying days are done i'm i'm old i'm out of the game and, and you don't let those things define you don't let the past define yeah. you in that way learn from it connect with it and you're not done and you're going to find your way forward in a way uh when, when the opportunity pre presents itself and and him returning uh is, is really powerful for me i love that scene we had each other we had each other I so I great. love that scene as well. And and going on more of some Kylo Ren action. I see the Super Chats coming and the Streamlabs coming in, guys. We will get to those if you want to start sending them in. Ken, uh, Ken and I will be answering uh, all your Star Wars questions and uh, anything, you know, and jumping into conversations like this that you drive. So Super Chats are always welcome. I see your Patreon questions coming in there as well. But Streamlabs.com slash Mark Riley. We will get to those in about 15 minutes. But Ken, it's Kylo Ren. God, I had something to say about him. When the weight of the legacy that you were kind of bringing up, like he is the nephew of the, you know, mm -hmm. the Jedi that brought what balance at that point, I would say, right. The, yeah. Or at least the fall of the empire. Let's yeah. put it that way. Yeah. Uh, Anakin. Yeah. Probably. Brought, yeah. Would, yeah. Anakin. Anakin really, I mean, is the one that came over, saved Luke, brought balance to the forest. Luke is, you know, then becomes a legend. And but what is that doing for Ben Solo as he's, you know, you know more than I do in some of the supplemental canon material. I know uh, I'm I finished finally the the Kylo Ren comic, which I loved, by the way. I really, really loved it yeah, and well, gave me a little bit of, of Ben Solo. But Charles Sol, Sol, uh, Sewell, right? He wrote that one, I believe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I love that we got some Padawans. I love that we got some more Jedi that we were within the order that that Luke was trying to build. But it's Ben Solo. like. I, what in your opinion what is it that that why he fell to the dark side you know uh, if, based on your your everything yeah. that ken Napsuck knows writing your canon material that you you follow along with just your knowledge of star wars what is it do you yeah. think 
is the reason Ben Solo fell to the dark side. And let's be clear. My knowledge of Star Wars just depends greatly on my own point of view. Uh, and, and and how um, I, I, I'll, I, I still think going back to that comic series where we, where we actually see it, it it's, it's, it's to me it has to do with the, the search for identity, the search for getting outside that name mm -hmm. and not knowing how to deal with those pressures and being, being haunted by the legacies, haunted by his own past. Uh, at an early age, again, just not knowing what to do with the, all those names attached to him. And, and whereas Anakin had a lot of entitlement uh, being told he's the chosen one, going back to that Ryan Johnson tweet, I think that's a great point to put in there. Yeah. It, was, yeah. it, was, it was not a, just, it's not just about attachment will uh, lead you down the dark side. It's some entitlement, all that kind of stuff. So I think Kylo has that because it goes to that mask, which is why I love the the, the hot potato of the mask. We've talked about it here before, I'm sure, and talked about other places. But oh, yeah. he has that mask, and he thinks he's something. He's so confident around Laura Santeca. He's so cocky when he takes it off around Ray, and then she gets in his head right away. It shakes him, uh, and he tries to put it back on. He loses it. And then Snoke's like, you, it, that's stupid. Take it off. Uh, his father said, take it off. Like, that's not you. And so in Last Jedi, you know, he, you know, first of all, he kills Han, and then he kills Snoke. He's killing all the people telling him, that mask isn't you. And so when he's free of all those boundaries, uh, he goes ahead and, and with his search completed and, and, and needing to really bolster his identity in the face of a, of a potential threat with Palpatine, mm -hmm. he re reforms the mask with the Sith, uh, the Sith, uh, you know, mask maker there, the, uh, was it Albrecht, the, the, yeah. uh, the monkey guy, um, which is a fascinating, wonderful, weird sci-fi character. Right. Um, he puts the mask back on and, and it's, it's cracked and, and it's, it's fractured and it's not committed. It's not what it, it, it which wasn't. is Kylo, which but, is it, it, yeah. it's the point, which is why, what a, a, a part I did love about rise of Skywalker, the, the yeah. putting that mask back together is his fractured soul is yeah. that he is not knowing who he is. He starts in force awakens, not knowing really who he is. And I think I got to kill my dad to go that final distance and then I don't think that did it. Even it fractured him even more. And then he takes the mask off to prove himself to Snoke. And yeah. Ray puts him, you know, looks him right in the eyes and says, "You're not who you are, who you think you are. Come with me." He thinks he's getting her, but then he puts the freaking mask on. Yeah. He's still just, just all over the place. And I think that's what a big part I love about yeah. it. Now, I, I which I want to bring up to you, Ken, mm -hmm. because D Train Flash One Eight Four Eight Seven. I have a Streamlabs in here that I know um, I want to get your thoughts on this, Ken, but I interrupted. Please say something before. Oh, no, I just going back to a little bit more, you know, it's it's a fine tapestry of why he, he turned yeah. fear. Uh, Scrimshaw said something today on an episode that's going to be released this week of the, the actual true uh, villain in Star Wars is fear, which which leads to a lot of things. And uh, Kylo, Ben, after he does some horrible things or he's doubting, just not even horrible things, just doubting, again, going to the pastor's child scenario, pastor's kid, like, yeah. oh my God, I, I maybe I don't want this legacy. Maybe I don't want to be the second chosen one or Luke's prize student. Maybe I want to go fly a freighter, whatever. And so, fear of that. And then, and then he 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 has he he's he's crushed by this. This is why the, this idea of kill the past emerges. Not the theme of Last Jedi is often is reported, even by people who you think would get it. Um, <laughs> it's, not that yeah. he, he has a fear. What's his biggest fear? His his father was one fear, and he's he's afraid of you know forgiveness is a tough thing in in real life. This is the themes of Star Wars spilling out into real life. His father's final act is his act of compassion and forgiveness. The hand yeah. the cheek uh, is is something that haunts him. It, it 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 stays with him. It didn't. The death didn't. The murder didn't quench him. And his final memory is even as I killed my father, he forgave me. I'm afraid of that. I'm afraid of what that means. I'm afraid about my path. And then he can't can't kill his mother, but he also can't go back. He keeps telling Ray, like you you, you can't you can't go back to her either. No, she doesn't want to see me. She mm -hmm. she hates me. She hates me. And guess what? I hate her. Destroy the past. And, and who who has to uh, essentially other than com combined with Ray? But what's Leia's final act? It's an act of compassion, forgiveness to, to reconnect and appear with her son. And that's the thing that kind of clicks him in. The, the image and the, and, and, and the haunting, it is haunting, an image of his father just confirming that that cheek touch saved the galaxy and, and led to this final act, the final act of compassion, uh, laid the groundwork. But it's Leia that has to come back. And when he fully realizes, 
oh my God, my fear of not being loved by my mother after what I've done, my fear of, of forgiveness and, and uh, for myself and being able to live with the horrible things I've done, uh, maybe isn't as powerful as I, uh, it was powerful, but it wasn't, you know, it's, it's, it's not existent right now. My mother yeah. died and, and saved me in the process. Boom. So that leads to this big redemption. And, and that's, and that's the powerful stuff that I really connect with the Kylo character. Yeah, his his redemption really hit me in the good feels with Rise of Skywalker. It was the moment Leia got to him when he saw her. I thought that was so freaking powerful that it causes the Ray to even tap into what I felt like was a little bit of dark side. And then she realized this. There was a nice little back and forth there that I really thought was was some of the best stuff in that sequel trilogy it was the Ray and Kylo Ren um relationship i love everything you said i can't really add to it you're so good ken i have th these questions that i want to get to because get a to lot it. of people jumping in here um get to uh, uh getting uh getting inspired here james puckett my friend over here on patreon mm -hmm. here i say hey there mr riley hello to mr knapsack two things one mr knapsack i'm a very big fan of yours via force center and the schmodown i screamed force center during the great schmodown pre-show appearance in houston where my wife and i live secondly yeah what are your thoughts on the high? Oh, this thing cut off. Hold on. Here's the second one, the High Republic. Sorry about that being sent in two messages. Thank you. Thoughts on the High Republic? Yeah, dude, I haven't really talked to you about the High Republic. I um, It's the most excited I've been for some of the canon novels. Mm -hmm. I'm not crazy about having to fill in all the blanks with all of our uh, favorite characters, the legacy characters, if you will. Like, like, you know, takes place between Return of the Jedi and Empire Strikes Back. Takes place between New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. Takes place between. Now we're just going back, way back. And I did you read the um, the excerpt that came out? Yeah, we 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 uh, we're diving into that a little bit on tomorrow's show. Uh, first nice. of all, I also, also want to recommend uh, Queen's Peril uh, by E.K. Johnston, uh, which is a yeah, yeah. Uh, Padme prequel to Phantom Menace, and I, I've just scratched the surface on the book, and it's so good. Um, yeah, as far as High Republic, I, I'm excited. I'm excited now, but I will say I was less excited than other folks when this was all first announced. Really? Only because if, if you listen to me blab into these microphones long enough, I, I grew up and I still connect now with uh, what I always say is the war over lore, meaning the Jedi are part of it. And obviously I love the deep themes in Luke, but I, I was yeah, a Han, yeah. so I didn't necessarily go to the lightsaber guys. And I, I literally could take every Star Wars movie, book, comic, story, coloring book, map, action figure between the 19 years between revenge of the sith and new hope if that is literally all they, they said for the rest of time that, that that we're only covering these 19 years i'd be like that's all i want because i, I, I love i love everything in there and i love the connections going on and i love uh infant's nest and i love ray sloan and i love uh, uh beth Reeves's book rebel rising if you want to know more about jen or so and uh, saw Guerrero, blah, blah blah i can go go on and i on. love it you know, and I can't, and, and, and that's what I respect about you, Ken. You know, I, I suppose if that was all there, I would do the same thing. It's the high Republic, by the way, everybody, Leia coming in, saying hi, uh, coming in hot here, have the yes, nice little access for the dog. Of course, uh, yeah. the name of the Star Wars namesake. Here yeah. she is everyone. Okay, um, baby girl. But, but uh, I'll say about, about high Republic. So I was, I was, uh, I was less, um, I was uh, less. Oh, sorry, I was looking for the. Uh, I was looking for. I just assumed it's a one. Uh, that, uh, yeah, that's it. That could work. That's oh. that's part. That's um, part of it. Regarding the High Republic. Um. So all that to say, I'm not just putting over the, the rebellion era. I was like, all right, a bunch of Jedi roaming around. Hey, okay. I get it. Yeah, because okay. you know, I don't like because I'm. I never played Knights of the Old Republic. I didn't want Old Republic stuff. I've read one okay. of the novels. It was good. Uh, the, the new stuff came out. Um, I do like Lucina's Plagueis, Plagueis novel, even though it's Legends. But just a right. bu bunch of Jedi sitting around, going around the galaxy, doing things. I was like, I, I'd rather watch Saw Gerrera, Emphis Nest, and uh, uh, Cassian Andor have a meeting, a business meeting. See, it's a, you bring up a good point, dude. I mean, it's a, there's there's something for everybody, right, when it comes to Star Wars. That's kind of like, I've always, maybe it's the your, your penchant for Han Solo, and mine is Luke Skywalker. So when I'm getting some new Jedi running around, I'm wondering what it is. But however, the thing I liked about the excerpt is that we're not really with any Jedi. We're in this like weird hyperspace and we learn a little bit of the science of the hyperspace that 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 you know if you don't you know we know a little bit it's like not like you know dustin crop boys if you put you know the wrong coordinates you can you know what han solo says in a new hope but we we get a little bit of uh hyperspace stuff in this is yeah. this expert excerpt that's what we see 
that's that's yeah. actually saying it pays it back to the holding stuff which it pays it pays it to the solo quote that you just said because yeah. because star wars in 30 minutes comes in handy for you with quotes it sure uh, does it sure does but so that is the inciting incident and so this is what they for for anyone who doesn't want spoilers i guess don't read it. it's it's the first book light of the jedi by charles soul and this is the incident that sets off all of the storytelling and it's and it's tied to the hyperspace routes and it's Potentially, we don't know, tied to the villains of the series, the Nile, or at least the villains for now. I imagine the dark side will show up. But yeah. uh, it is this. I've So I am more excited than I was because we're getting the galaxy as a bit of a frontier. We're getting Jedi out and about in the galaxy acting on their own. That 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 prologue talks about that, that they mm -hmm. don't always have to answer to the council at this point. We're also getting uh, it's an interesting state of the galaxy in that prologue. If you read it, uh, a bunch a period of peace, exploration kind of harmony inclusion uh yeah and yeah hope and the hope and the hyperspace lanes represent this hope of people making their lives and truly like this frontier kind of thing right um and so that that the destruction of hyperspace lanes which by the way how it actually works in this incident the the the, the ship hits something explodes in hyperspace hyperspace yeah. i'm not you know i'm not an expert on it and and i'm not a you know i didn't i've never ridden a space whale so i don't know um but <laughs> Uh, no, I have kind of, it's kind of dimensional you're in other dimensions right it's it's right. not just like fast travel and so when it, that ship explodes pieces of this large freighter are now going through the galaxy raining down on planets hmm. uh, causing destruction and everything and then plus if you can't travel the hope of the galaxy is now starting to fade that's a problem as they try to expand the galaxy right people that make a life for themselves which is what that thing it's a captain uh 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 head of cassette uh with nine thousand souls and she focuses they're not like refugees but it's like that kind of frame she's connecting with these kids on this level so she's transporting them to a new new a new hope in the galaxy and for that to be endangered uh it it, it, it it's going to affect the jedi so now i'm like oh this is this is this is great. This is more than I expected, and I and I'm really excited in, about it. I love it, man. I love it when you say that. And that that is to me like whatever the the hyperspace lanes to to the, everything like expanding the galaxy, trying to make little uh, you know areas to travel. They bring up the outer rim, the different uh, areas of the galaxy that is this, this, and this. But if you go to the outer rim and you use these hyperspace trails. And this explosion, somebody did something. It's the inciting incident of this story. I wonder how the Jedi are going to be involved. It's exciting. It just feels a little bit different for me. It's that I want more of a jumping in point for a story that doesn't have to have a Luke or a Han or anything as the central point. Although I hear you, dude. I would read those as well. Well, yeah, but that's the that's the test, right? Is how right? Because at some point you have to. They, they've officially wrapped up the Skywalker saga, which I, to me doesn't mean we're not going to see these characters. In fact, we are going to see uh, or hear Luke and Leia in the Afra audio book original that's coming right, out. Right, right. Uh, yeah, that's right. So um, we're not done with that, but, it, but it's it to officially kind of say, hey, and it's and it's literary, and whether or not they do a movie with it down the line, maybe, but it's that's not the plan. Uh, and and to go that way, just kind of say, hey, let's, let's try something new without those names around, uh, it's, it's, that's, that's, that's the big challenge for Star Wars fans, and, and, and it's so well, far. Yeah. We'll see. And there's a lot coming in right now, dude, as far as rumors. I have something here. Akaika over here in the uh, Patreon page. That's patreon.com slash Riley Roundtable. Akaika, you're asking, what do you think of the rumors swarming the internet that Lucasfilm is thinking of erasing the new trilogy with the concept Veil of the Force? I have to admit the trilogy is the most uh, inconsistent of the three, but it still has its place. Basically, they would be making the last three films be an alternate timeline. Now, Ken, I asked Akaika, give me some sourcing on that one. I saw the art. I saw the link that you sent me, and uh, I'm not buying this for a second. It's a rumor right now. I don't think Disney, uh, in a million years, would retcon these movies. In fact, all three of them made over a billion dollars. So I don't know why they would. Now I know if you don't like the you know the story and the way it went, you know, to each their own. But it it, it like Luke Skywalker is not going to have the Infinity Gauntlet and this sounds like what Marvel can do. This is Star Wars. So alternate timelines and everything. I don't buy it. This is the first when you sent this to Kaika, It's the first I'd heard. So Ken, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I think it's pretty mm. much uh, sorry bullshit. I, I mean, it sounds it. I fell asleep during Endgame. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> Oh, that's what I love about you, Ken. Uh, no, look, look, unless unless the source is named uh, Kathleen Kennedy 
and yeah. Liger, and they're speaking to something. This this is um, not something. The, the the emotional canon, the connections they put in these movies, whether you like them or not, they're there and they connect deep back. It's, I love Rise of Skywalker because it's literally built on every emotional beat in every movie that comes before it. It's so well connected to that stuff yeah. uh, that whether you like it or not, it's there. Um, and I just, you know, Veil of the Force. Veil of the Force, you're not getting Harrison Ford back. He's done. It's on solo. You could throw all the money in the world at him. He'd go, what? I mean, can you can you imagine the pitch meeting for Harrison Ford? Hey, Harrison, we the Force Awakens, Rise of Skywalker, Last Jet. Yeah. You're th those were veils. He'd say he'd say this. You want to come back? How the Force works. <laughs> exactly. But he'd also go. He'd look at you and he'd like, "Are you insane? I'm not coming back." to do Han Solo again. And then he's going to go fly his plane somewhere. And by the way, Harrison, would you yeah. stop flying your plane? Maybe stop flying, maybe. Can he stop flying his plane? He keeps landing in golf courses. At least, give it, at least get Indy 5 out, just for me. Um, it, 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 Indy 5, yeah. I love the Do you like James Mangold coming in and doing it? I think that's actually a good... I've, I've warmed to the news. At first, I was like, Spielberg's not doing it. But Mangold doing like a Logan-esque right. yeah. Harrison Ford, yeah. Indiana Jones. Love it. I love, love it. it. Love um, patreon.com slash rally round table. Ikaika, thank you for the comment. Um, hadn't heard the rumors, but like I said, I just I I don't buy it. But gonna now uh start now getting to those stream labs and those super chats. Um, uh, one Taylor coming back in. I appreciate your generosity through what you're going through, but I understand that you started uh if anyone is interested, we started a nonprofit charity in her honor. Truly love you guys. Thank you so much. The Paisley Project. Now, over in Streamlabs, Jake Yacoveta, thank you so much for this. He said, much love to Taylor and Chelsea Palmer. He uh, he said earlier that they lost their daughter, Paisley, and started a fund. Please help at thepaisleyproject.org. Now, I have this now. I'm going to update my um, description here in the YouTube video. I would love it if you guys want to uh, help in any way. I'm going to do so as well. So Taylor, thank you for your generosity and continue to just fight that good fight. I know it must be tough for you, man. And I can't imagine what you must be going through um, to lose your six year old. And I, I just, I, my, my heart goes out to you, dude. So uh, we do have links here that I am putting in now, right now, and I'm going to put into the uh, edited description below. So thank you for that. Um, and then over here, Kalem. No one's ever really gone who was responding to you, Taylor. Their spirit, memory, and what they stood for will always live with you. Thank you, you guys. Calum, and for Taylor, for your generosity and for, for, for sending that in. My God, I'm humbled by that. Um, PLD here. Stopping in for a quick like while I can. I always watch these later. This is one of my favorite shows. Salute to Mark and Ken. To you, Mr. Denuzio. Thanks for stopping in, buddy. I appreciate it. Uh, and over here, look at this, our old friend, Christy McGee, sending some love. So thankful for this calm and thoughtful discussion as I relax at the end of a long and trying day. Christy, we love you. Yeah, uh, hopefully your day got a little bit better. We're relaxing as well now, talking Star Wars. Ken. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Star hold on. Wars, man. Hey. Yeah, yeah, do it. Come on. Hey, hey, ball drop McGee. What's up, disco lady? What's up? Hey, the ball drop McGee. Yeah. <laughs> Over here now on Streamlabs, uh, Ken, D-Train, I mentioned you, Flash18487. He writes, Adam Driver was great as Kylo Ren, but I think he misused the character. I get that you liked him, but there was nothing really about him. I felt, uh, or, or sorry, uh, original or anything that I haven't seen before. Deciding between the light and the dark side uh, is getting tiring real fast. I understand. You know, listen, Star Wars is great, right? You can like what you like. We like what we like. And I understand if, uh, you know, Adam Driver, you said was great as Kylo Ren, but you just didn't, you know, get to him. So Flash18487, I'd love to know the, the character that really did speak to you, whether it was Han Solo later in life or if the sequel trilogy didn't really speak to you in, in general. But I appreciate you sending in the Streamlabs and having our, our, ourselves a conversation. Uh Ken, I got Hitman Houston here, a Hudson, I should say. Hitman Hudson in streamlabs.com slash Mark Riley writing, Mark and Ken, have you read any of the new Star Wars books? If so, which are your favorites? What are your favorites, Ken? You do them more than I do. Well, it's my job. I have to. Yeah, right, man. <laughs> uh, Damn right. I read every one of them. Uh, I miss Battlefront, first Battlefront one, and Force Collector I just got from Kevin Shinnick. Uh mm -hmm. 
Uh, love Leia, Princess of Alderaan. I love Bloodlines. I love Bloodlines. Love one of my favorite. Claudia, Master Apprentice is good too. I love Claudia Gray stuff. I I really do love uh, a lot of the stuff in the Aftermath series, especially the interludes. Um, yeah, I like the Aftermath. I finally got through cool. them all. The Rogue, the Rogue One novelization. You guys have heard me talk about so much. I love that one. Rebel Rising. Um, is, is, I highly recommend the adaptations on um, Force Awakens, Last Jedi, and Rise of Skywalker. Ken, you know, I've finally, I've been picking away at the audio of Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. It, it's really good. It's really, really good. I love the the extra added stuff that you can get from the story that's not in the movie. Yeah, and I, I you know, still, I'll just leave it at that. I still think one of the most important uh, moments in Star Wars is the prologue to The Last Jedi novel is written by Jason Fry. Uh, Thank you. I was just going to bring that up. The the Force dream, if you will, of Luke Skywalker of an alternate life, the Force telling him, basically, like testing him almost. Yeah. Well, no, the, the Force saying, you oh, you cut yourself off from me? Great. Yeah. Great. Here's what would have happened if you didn't act for the greater good of the galaxy. If you didn't take right. a step towards the light, this is what would have happened. And it's 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 cool, man. It's cool. Yeah. The force reaches out and finds you. I love it. I love uh, it. So yeah, there's a there's a lot of um, a lot of stuff out. A lot of the books too. Even if I overall the books, hey, it's good. You know, there's some great moments in it. Um, uh, Battlefront Two uh, novel with Iden Versio. A lot of stuff with her family is is great. Um, I do like the first first Alphabet Squadron. Um, there has been a lot. Of, uh, you know, some of them don't catch me. Which I don't like the new Thrawn stuff as much as, as other people do. Yeah, I've heard mixed things. I never got into the Thrawn stuff, but it was no. mostly because of you know the people I trust saying, you know, it's it is what it he's is. Not a great Star Wars writer. So he's, yeah. a, he's a great sci-fi writer. Uh, uh, a, a great sci-fi writer who, by the way, kept Star Wars or brought life back into it. I don't want that to be clipped out as an insult. Uh, the guy... No. No. It was part of the reason we have Star Wars still going because Air of the Empire comes out and, and people are like, cool, we love this. It just going back, he's more sci fi than Star Wars and, 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 and those Thrawn books because of Thrawn's character. Because of Thrawn, the character. Exactly, dude. And I think he likes the politics of that, of like, you know, the, the a blue space alien, just, um, you know, yeah. taking over in space. You know? Know? Even the politics. It's just like four paragraphs of, of the degrees the Star Destroyer turns to fire to intercept it and then you hear thrawn go into it like I, it just it's it's not my it's not my thing but other people i do love the character of thrawn make, make that right clear. Okay. uh the ek johnson stuff the, the 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 queen shadow novel and now queen's peril Woo, good stuff and padme's underrated character uh a lot left on the table with that character but the, but the clone war series picked that up and, and these books are picking it up too Nice. Well, there you go, dudes. Uh, some recommendations there. Um, yeah, Bloodline Lost Stars were some of my favorites, Ken. Um, uh, and what was the last one I read um, that I really enjoyed? God, I can't. Um, no, no, no. Sorry, I was thinking about the comics. I was. I wanted to say the comics, if you want to go from the books. The Kylo Ren series is great. And then I know I'm ordering on Amazon, dude, um, getting some finally catching up on some of the Darth Vader lines and Vader down. I can't wait to get into those because um, I you've said really great things about those, correct? Yeah, I think they're overall. I really like a lot of the post series. I love Afra as a character. There's some great moments in that series. Uh, the the one that just wrapped up. Um, I know some new ones have come out. I just haven't gone to my comic shop in four months, um, and I've uh, got yeah. some shipped to me. Uh, I don't I don't buy digitally. I should um, too much space. But uh, the the Vader both Vader ones are really good. The the second ones top notch. The Poe one's really good. The Kanan one is underrated um the lando the first lando five issue one um, Oh, cool yeah I've also as well and he ties back to it in the lando video. one that's right i wanted yeah. to get that one good. damn it you want to um, know lobot that's a good series to read nice well there you go some uh food for thought there on your uh canon uh books and comics and what have you madison Badger, thank you for this for the super chat. Wish we got a moment between R two D two and Kylo Ren. I bet R two would let the expletives fly. I would have loved to. I know. You know, we could have had a lot of moments like Kylo with Chewie. I think would have been an interesting one. I know they had some. Um, they had some stuff going. Yeah, yeah, they had some stuff going there. Uh, no, no, no. Some. Um, uh, didn't they have some Rise of Skywalker previs stuff? They had concept art with it. Yeah, concept yeah. art. Yeah. Um, but yeah, R two D two. I could just see him just you know beeping his way expletives, of course, to Kylo Ren. I'm sure he had a lot to say about that over in the stream labs. Mike Broski, thank you for this, dude. Uh, writing can't watch live, but here's a bottle of wine on me. That's right. The twenty dollar stream labs donation goes into the wine fund. So Mike Broski, appreciate your donation of the twenty here. 
Ken, he writes, what acting choice scene moments can you see that the traits of Leia in Kylo or Ben? So traits of Leia in Kylo or Ben. I can see Anakin and Han inside the characters, but it's hard to see Leia. What are your thoughts? Ooh, I love that. What a great question, Mike. Uh, that's a great question. Kind of throw me for a loop because I've it, it's so connected on the other side. I know, right? Uh, Leia is a steadfast heart. Leia is, is a leader who sacrifices her 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 greater good, not just in the end, but always. She's always putting herself aside for for the greater good. In the end, uh, certainly uh, Ben does that mm -hmm. uh, uh, for for her. Um, there's probably some good leadership skills that we don't see. He's probably uh, you know good at yeah, man. <laughs> her story a little little wonky um <laughs> but, uh, I, I think there's some stuff there i i really like that question i almost would have time to like to have time to think about that one because uh I'll be good I, 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 i'd want it mike no shit man i want to go back and watch the movies and really look for like little leia isms in him um but to what ken you're saying i think that there is you know the idea that, that leia is a, a a leader but that you know she never wavered in the way she, I, I love the flashback to, uh, you know, Return of the Jedi. They're on Endor, aren't they, Ken? Training Luke and Leia over there in that flashback. Not Endor. It's the the planet that they are hiding on, and and uh, was Agent Agent Kloss. Oh, okay. So you know, yeah. I love that. Um, so they're training, right? And Leia says, "No, I, I, you know, this is where I need to be." Um, yeah. I think that Ken, uh, Ken, sorry. I think that Kylo. I wonder what are some like I would love to hear from some of you guys if you uh, Mike is such a great question what what if you guys saw anything yeah is it is it by design Ken that we get a lot of Han isms like I felt the shrug when he gets the uh, lightsaber in Rise of Skywalker was very Han he was just like there's a list somewhere his uh, his point he points at one point uh, and uh, and it's a very Han and uh, Han poke. Point. He does what you know, and he does use a, a gun, and he and he shoots just like Han did in Force Awakens. So that was a great moment. Um, yeah. But Leia, I mean, it's just like what I loved about the Kylo Ren. The most powerful, one of the most powerful moments is him wanting, you know, having mom dialed in there. Leia is in the crosshairs of his tie um, silencer, and then he doesn't pull the trigger. I know it's not a Leia ism, but it just it just shows that Leia is just constantly in him. So he's carrying around his mother. It's, it's you know, everywhere he goes. Yeah, it's the power of motherhood and, and fatherhood is explored perhaps more famously in Star Wars, um, which Absolutely. I love. But also, I, I think more time should be sent, spent with the mothers. I'm a big fan of Shmi Skywalker, Lyra uh, Urso, all those kind of characters, Sonora Wexley, you know, on and on and on. Um, yeah, yeah. Padme, though not directly. So, um, but it just speaks to the, the power of it and, and which is why in the end, you know, um, her decision was twofold. Obviously, the that kind of connected some dots on uh, the vision of uh, frightened her uh, or at least uh, knocked her off her path. But she always kind of knew the best part. The galaxy needs this part of me and going off to be a Jedi is a very not uh, solid, solitary kind of pursuit, especially right now. So the galaxy yeah. better served by me in the government doing what I, what I do best. Um, I love that about Leia. Yeah. And I love that about Leia. And that's another thing. I mean, unfortunately, with that other rumor about the veil of the forest, like, what are we going to shoot another Star Wars trilogy, Ken, and recast Carrie Fisher? You know, our story is was was lovingly given with Carrie Fisher. And I love that, um, you know, we had a little bit more of her in The Rise of Skywalker. But yeah. it makes me think of her when when we talk about, like, doing other movies. There's a there's somebody just tagged me, dude. There's a rumor going on. Um, I'm not buying this either, guys. Sorry, we got this cover. Uh, doesn't have a, a, a good history, but Ken, nonetheless, good conversation here. Rooster Brothers directing a young Luke Skywalker series of movies. Would you buy that? Would you want to see that? Would I want to see it? A young Luke Skywalker? Would tell, what, what, what Sebastian Stan as Luke Skywalker? Is this that, that line? I have no idea. I, you know, it doesn't really say. Well, it's a, we got this covered... Um, uh, article that came in. Uh, somebody tagged me on Twitter. I love. I love the conjecture. I love talking about the idea that we could get a Luke Skywalker, a young Luke Skywalker movie that sets up. It's going to bounce off of uh, Man uh, Mandalorian, dude. And I'm going in uh, soon here to James Clark to your question about the Mandalorian. But I brought up this conversation because Ken, they're mm -hmm. saying that they would do this backdoor kind of setup over for a Luke Skywalker movie through Ahsoka Tano, Baby Yoda maybe getting it over to you, uh, Luke, which is, you know, right after the, you know, the events of Return of the Skywalker, uh, sorry, Return of the Jedi. 
So setting up a movie. I don't know. It's we got this covered. I don't buy it for a second. But no, no that's that they they, they cherry they just come. I sometimes I feel like they come up with just clickbait they, headlines, and this is one of them. Now Russo brothers wanting to do a Star Wars movie. Sure, I know they're big, huge fans. Yeah, young Luke Skywalker. Again, uh, I'll believe it when I see it. If uh, Kathleen Kennedy says it, if Lucasfilm says it, if uh, Variety, uh, Hollywood Reporter, The Wrap, a Deadline, even some of my friends still over there at Collider, you know, with sourcing. Right now, just rumor, but still, it's. It, I love talking about it, Ken, because Luke Skywalker, Skywalker's my boy. Yes, if, I want a young Luke Skywalker movie. You'd be into that? Not, not movie. Yeah, sure. Yeah, would I be into it? Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, I want the story. I want him and Lor Santeca going around the galaxy. I want him searching. That'd be fun. So I, would, I, would it be a series? Maybe then. Would you be more interested in a uh, Disney Plus series with the Sebastian Stan? Like you mentioned at this point, I I'm, I'm interested in the series stuff because I think there's less pressure on it and I could just go enjoy it. Uh, even though I'm going to review it on four center, you know, I'm, I'm just, yeah. I'm not on Twitter right now. I'm, I'm on it. You can find me, but like, I'm not active on it and, and it's, uh, freed up my life. It's great. So <laughs> I'm, I can go enjoy some things, uh, you know, oh, like, I love it. Ken. I understand. Uh, it's yeah. just ridiculous. Uh, what do you, everything, everything. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, and and I'll tell you, it's not big issue stuff in the world. I back in December after Rise of Skywalker, I looked around. I was like, why? Do, why am I on here? Why do I have to even worry about these weird takes on this movie uh, that I love? <laughs> God bless you. Have your takes, uh, like the Kylo. Have, have, have your have, takes. Have, have all the takes you want. If you yeah. don't want to watch the Battle of Light and Dark in a Star Wars movie, try Star Trek. But this is what it's about. It's literally what George said. It's always about the the battle of, of good versus evil because it's yeah. a modern myth. It's it's for twelve year olds to, to 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 how to get how to how to get through life. It, it, that's the point of it. Um, but to that to the remember to the, yes, I want the content. I want to know Luke from the day after uh, the fireworks explode on Bright Tree Village over Bright Tree Village up yeah. and we we you know. He goes to the island, uh, or, or what we've already kind of seen around Ben and the school. I want, I want all of that. I want him and Lando around the galaxy, uh, chasing Ochi from Bastoon. I want all of it. Um, I just, they were always very unsure, or not unsure, but they just always kept that out, right? It, it, there's it, it, Chuck Wendig said he had a lot of Luke Skywalker stuff in the aftermath series, and and, and they asked him to take it all they out. They asked him to take it out, yeah. Um, so I and see them Battle going Front. back. Yeah, there was probably there, there's Battlefront two. That's my oh, story. I love that story of Luke. Favorite. That's one of my favorite Luke Skywalker it's moments. Great Luke story. Yeah, him and Del Mico. And there might have been more. There was definitely more stuff in the story. And EA was like, eh, you know, we we don't want to put that much in the game. But um, so yeah, I want it as a movie. That's that's not where they probably feel they need to go now. Again, it's a Disney Plus series. I give me a new Star Wars show every month. I'd be fine. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I tend to want the, the series now. So Russo Brothers not doing it. It's like we know Taika Waititi's doing the movie, but they really are hitting a little pause button. Um, Ken, over here on uh, speaking of Mandalorian and how it could tie and, you know, Luke Skywalker Disney Plus series. Well, who knows? But I have James Clark. I mentioned over at streamlabs.com slash Mark Riley. What if uh, Din Jiren is not the actual title character of the Mandalorian? What if the series ends up being the story of how the child becomes a Mandalorian and baby Yoda ends up being the title character? Ken. Yeah. But again, can, can baby Yoda be a Mandalorian. Can he adopt the ways of the Mandalorian? That's what they've set up. The question that's, that's, that's yeah. But why, why, what's the, why don't ask the, how don't ask the, what ask the, why, what is from a storytelling purpose? What's the storytelling purpose for that? And it might be that the chosen family, uh, found family, um, Finding a way, uh, yeah, I, I, I think it's it's more possible than 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 you would think, right? Um, sure, sure. I like the idea of it. The story is sounds really interesting. Something that I wasn't expecting. I know with rumors of Ahsoka coming in, she's force sensitive. Obviously, we could get Baby Yoda to tie up with them. How is Luke factor into it? Just with the Jedi, there's a lot of fun to be yeah. had from the story of the Mandalorian and where it can go, whether it's, you know, Ken, we're hearing a ton of people are coming in with what um, rebels and uh, you know, uh, what's, uh, Katie Sackhoff's character coming back. And will they bring back an Ezra? Will they bring back a Sabine? All that kind of stuff. 
I'll believe it when I see it. What are your thoughts on that? I've heard rumors. Oh, look, some of it, the Bo-Katan one, let's just say it sounds like it would be true. Um, yeah, uh, I, I believe the Rosario Dawson is Ahsoka. Like, again, a lot of times these stories pop out and um, they're, you know, you know, you're more in the, you were more in the movie news side than I was. You, yeah, you hear yeah. something and it might be a rumor, rumor some is out of control and, and a website reports on it but it's not it's not the rap it's not that it's not sourced so but anyways i i believe most of what we're hearing from that look here's the other thing too you get uh, lucasfilm magically m i don't know how they pull it off kept baby yoda or the child or the asset whatever you want to call it oh yeah right they secret they kept it's it secret. All, it's only, insane. only a little whispers before that I that I had heard, and I even joked about it three weeks before or so on Jedi Council. <laughs> I, mean, I made a joke about it. I was like, "What are we gonna have a bunch of baby Yodas running around?" I would not have made that joke if I hundred percent knew what was happening. I made it because it was like, "Wow, this is starting. This is this is wild." So wow. Lucasfilm clamped it down as best in this age, especially yeah. Disney Gallery, The Mandalorian. The amount of people who just are on set working with that thing that it did not get out is still one of the most impressive feats in modern <laughs> content yeah. where literally you have people who run websites, you know, getting jobs at buildings and so they can hide in the parking structure across the street from sets. Like, yeah. Right. Uh, to get the scoops, baby Yoda being one of the, yeah, well, the biggest of all time. I think that yeah. is the fact that a lot of these other stories may have gotten out. Um, is intriguing to me. Um, not you know, it, 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 right purpose, but like, all right. So that, that's, it is what it is maybe. Um, and it all, it all tracks. I, I don't want Mandalorian. I, I worry, you know me, you know me, man. I won't, I, I'm all for Canon stuff. I study, I study Alex Dame, even when I'm not competing in that, in that trivia show, I, I watch Alex's videos. I love Canon timelines. I love knowing where everything sits. I want to know those answers. Yeah, me too. It's more about the why. So I, I get, a connected we're so used to this connected universe that it does, that doesn't really mean much it's all connected emotionally it all is connected to the themes because again this is this is we've talked about it george is like uh, luke's sky luke's lightsaber is is not standing out of uh of the uh the the sun on tatooine on, J on jabba's sail barge and eh, make it green yeah why <laughs> I don't care. We'll get a letter in Starlog and, and someone will complain. Make it green. Um, actually, Ken, yeah. it's the kyber crystal inside that uh, yeah. makes the lightsaber green and that the kyber yeah. yeah. And that's the amazing thing of George. And I think that's what the 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 wonderful thing that we love Star Wars. My point to the, the connection stuff. Yeah. I, I don't want I try I trust they'll do it right because I'm rewatching Rebels right now and I just finished season one and I'm into season two. I, I you know, and I love I love the show. I always had some weird views on. I was like, I don't know if I like season one as much, and I just rewatched it. I was like, man, what was my problem back in the day? Because season one is is just dripping with greatness. Yeah, but going into season one of Rebels, if you had said, hey, at the end of this, uh, at the very end of this, Ahsoka Tano, Rex, Darth Vader, right, Obi Wan Kenobi, Darth Maul, Maul. They're all going to factor into this. In fact, one of the great, two of the greatest moments in all of Star Wars are going to be Ahsoka cracking the mask of Vader and seeing Anakin for the first time, and Anakin kind of almost being able to the moment of 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 him returning, and then and then Maul dying in Anakin's, or excuse me, Maul dying in Obi Wan's arms. I would have been like, what? what? This is the show with the little fourteen year old guy running around. Right. Um, so if you're gonna go ahead. That, yeah, that that Obi Wan Maul moment. Sorry to interrupt, but I have to because that is the most. You're expecting in like Phantom Menace: Duel of the Fates round two, and there's three moves. But you, you do get round two. You get it's Obi round two. Yeah, you get, you get Obi Wan going to Qui Gon mode, right? Be why not just a not just a hey kids remember that shot in the trailer? He goes to Qui Gon mode because he knows Darth Maul. Maul 
in 20, 30 years hasn't grown, hasn't changed. He's still driven by the same vengeance and also the hubris. And he's going to use the same move he tried to kill my master on. And I'll kill him like that. But also, in the end, it's about compassion. It is about compassion versus vengeance. It's about growth versus stagnation. That's what that right. fight is about. And that's why it works. It's the why and of so, And it's that. And it's as small as that. And all the building up from that moment, like you said, the the referencing of Qui-Gon, the, 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 the ideals of the Jedi that, yes, Maul, of course, driven by hate and revenge and the dark side is going to forget all the shit that he's been doing, just chasing Obi-Wan and Obi-Wan now older and wiser just goes, yep. Boom, 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 boom. And that's, it, really great. that's that, that episode. It, I, uh, and again, I wrote about it and, and I love it's, it. It's um, incredible. It, it is. It's one of the best star Wars. Yeah, there is. It, it, it's, uh, you know, it's the idea of look of Obi-Wan. Look, look at, look what I've overcome. Maul can only see the surface of things. Yep. Hey, like a lot of fans and fandom. Um, but that my point to all that is Mandalorian season one is so off in its own world. And you see in Disney gallery, star Wars, the Mandalorian um, Favreau talks all the time. He says all the time to the documentary, we're not star Wars. We're not star Wars. We're not the movies. We could go play in this little sandbox with the forgotten figures and have some fun. Right. But doing so he really connected with star Wars and they are that it is star wars as you know it, it, even a coloring book comes out and people debate on whether it's canon or not or what it means so <laughs> it's it's a, I, I can trust them with feloni handling a lot of the lore what it means and he understands a lot of stuff uh and, and favreau being john favreau uh, more favreau is more apt to run a studio than feloni ever will be but feloni has got the story there learning the live action as he says several times in the doc i trust them if at the end of this series, it is if if at the end of the series this ends up th on the doorstep of of Luke and Lor Santeca or something like that, I can't see it right now. I, I can't. I'm like, no, that wouldn't. I wouldn't I, have seen what we just talked about with Obi Wan and Maul. So I, I I I trust the creators to take take this where they want it to go. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm with you. Everything you said, Favreau is who's one of my favorites. Um, just because I've been with him since his Swingers days, and and he was a per personal hero of mine. You know, for getting the money, writing Swingers, getting getting it to Doug Lyman, and getting that production going, getting it out there, and the, and look where he is now. I drive right past the the 101 Cafe. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, where he gets the uh, grows up, he grows up, and you grow. Grows up, he grows up, he grows up. Oh, I'm drunk. I'm drunk. I'm oh, it's it's one of my favorite places. Oh, too. The, the, the uh, brownie yeah. waffle at that uh, at that place, dude. Well, You've done that, right? I always, uh, I always drive by. I'll I'll get in my car and go for drives, and I'll cut through the zoo and Griffith Park, and I end up by the Los Feliz uh, Nine, the golf course they're playing on. Um, oh yeah, man. The, the Los Feliz. I always pass. Uh, what is it? Um, the Derby. Sometimes derby. I pass the Derby, and I go. Yeah. Well, I used to run stand-up comedy shows there. Did uh, you really at the Derby? Derby where he uh, where he meets Heather Graham at the end of that that's like yeah the, like the new Derby uh I I've been there I used to get the drink tickets but in the other room is where um where uh the comedy show was but it's gone it's a bank now <laughs> oh Jesus of course it is uh Paul Martin thank you for this just wanted to say how good it is to see you two together again the force is with us thank you and that's uh to everybody joining thank you very much i mean so many of you watching right now i appreciate you guys joining in on riley's cantina here with me mark riley and my dear friend ken knapsack so for the next 25 minutes we're gonna go answer all your super chats patreon and streamlabs.com slash mark riley if you want to get those in there now like this one from john sucks ken john sucks writes john john think i think you, you do not suck I have so many questions about the sequel trilogy, he writes, especially when it comes to Kylo Ren. On one, uh, one of the main things I am wondering is how many scoops, what flavors, and what toppings he takes on his Sunday. Uh, Dude, okay. Kylo Ren gets two scoops of vanilla and chocolate sauce and calls it a day. Yeah, well, he he, he gets that. He gets chocolate sauce, uh, but then he wants to put sprinkles because when he and a cherry on top because when he was a kid his family would let him do that uncle right. Lee, uh, and uncle chewy would uh would take him to the uh dexter's ice cream parlor and and he wants to do that but he felt he felt like he he grew up and he couldn't and to form my own identity and get outside of the shadow of my past i can't allow myself to do that anymore and then what he end realizes in the end if you want 
um, ice cream, uh, sprinkles on your ice cream or a cherry on top, you, 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 you can have it. And that's what he does. So, I'm with you, man. Oh, that's a great question. John sucks. See, you do not suck. That was a good question. What all the star Wars people would get on their Sundays. Yeah. What the thing yeah, is, is by the way, thank you for this Haskell 420. Yeah. Hit that like button. Let's get over a hundred likes on this video. The more likes, the better. It could start popping up in that algorithm and get more people to see it. Riley's Rebels, hashtag Riley's Rebels. Get that going. Hit that like button right now. Right now. Right now. You do it right now. Watch it right now. I was Can gonna video. Yeah. I was gonna say, Mark, we're assuming John Sucks is um a self-loathing title. He could be casting aspersions on a friend of his named John. So could be, could be. Maybe, yeah. Maybe John stole his girlfriend or something. Yeah. Could and be, does yeah. It does suck. I don't know. Yeah, but John, yeah, John sucks. Thank you for the question. I really appreciate it. Over here on Patreon, I missed some of these. I want to uh, La Sombra del Imperio. Big hug from Mexico, Mark. He writes, "Thank you so much for that, dude." But also keeps going. You know, what do you think about the recent rumors? They're asking to La Sombra. Uh, I guess it's going around, Ken. This uh, this uh, Disney canon or a, a race the canon retcon it. It's it's guys. I really don't think it. <laughs> please. So let's talk about the Mandalorian. La Sombra, the thing is that the Mandalorian will start the events to include Boba, Ahsoka. The conflict could scale up. Uh, how is that going to connect now to the bigger picture? Well, you know, Ken and I kind of went into some of the ideas of uh, how it can connect with Rebels, how the Darksaber, obviously we've seen that, how it could land all the way, lead up to Baby Yoda on the doorstep of Luke Skywalker, Ken. We don't know yet, and I'm not I'm not big on speculating either. But what I want to ask you, dude, is to yeah. jump over to the Obi Wan series. Um, yeah. No news is good news. Right. The pandemic being what it is, um, I haven't heard anything. Have you heard anything? Obi Wan is still on schedule. I, I imagine they're going to be oh, they're yeah. just writing the scripts and getting ready once this thing yeah. is over. Yeah. No, I think that's already already done again. I think round two on that was done. Um, cheapers, creepers. You can't find these Obi Wan quotes easy. Uh, you know, yeah. So, right. All right. All right. Um, um, if you strike me down, I okay. shall become more powerful than you can possibly that's a, imagine. It's a long. Right. Thank you. That's so, the one. Know, you. Um, Obi Wan always has the high ground, dude. So he knows. He so knows. I hear. Yeah, I didn't see. Uh, it's been. It's been. Mark. It's been the best. I don't know any Star Wars news other than I go to StarWars.com, and if it's on there or if there's a juicy enough it's, room, finds my way finds its way to me on uh, through the Force Center Discord, then we talk about it on Force Center. Um, the only thing I, I know we heard that they look seems like they'll be using or have used or whatever. I, you know, it's so confusing when they shoot these things sometimes. Uh, the 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 volume technology, right? Um, Right. Which, is, which is interesting. I'm 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 intrigued. I, I would love if it, you know if they could fly out to Tunisia and, and shoot you and McGregor <laughs> there. Right. Uh, but though I had some some uh, watching the Mandalorian, it didn't it didn't look as good to me as I wanted it to be all the time. But then I saw the behind the scenes on on the Mandalorian, and there was some scenes that they completely fooled me. So I was like, all right, I guess it's way better than I gave it credit for. And I'm definitely on everyone. I'm excited. That technology is super exciting. It's crazy. And that's just that's incredible. Thing. Yeah. So, um, uh, I'm excited for that. I'm excited for that series. I've always, always have been. We talked about it. I think the last time I was on here, but, um, yeah, I, I could be more. One thing I heard. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's okay. slow news, man. What can I say, man? There's a lot of stuff happening outside of star Wars that is uh, taking a lot of the attention. Yeah. Yeah. Rightfully so. But even outside of that, I just got to tell you once, once I was uh, free of that, that other show uh, and, and didn't, and didn't have to do it anymore. I didn't have to, uh, you know, and it was fun to do to be clear. It was fun to do, but it was like time for me to go for it and, and get out of, get out from it. And, and um, it's what uh, I love. You, that you are doing because I'm a, yeah. a subscriber of Force Center and I could listen to you guys talk Star Wars and I can talk yeah. to you about yeah. Star Wars for hours because there is yeah. some news. I just have separated from needing to keep up to date on even not just the rumors but what is a rumor and what is not as not a rumor uh, of texting friends I know. Hey, what did you, what did your buddy on the set of Rise of Skywalker think about this? What, what did he say about this? Tell tell me about this. Uh, I, I have I have stepped away from that. I'm like Luke on the island except for I'm staying. And uh, it's uh, well, and he stayed I'm, too. I'm gonna, uh, stay, I'm gonna stay on that island with you, man. It's fun just to go back and just um, 
study the themes of Star Wars and the silly things and, and, and a lot of silliness of Star Wars. I, I just had a chance to interview Kevin Shinnick, the author of Force Collector. Uh, and what was awesome about that is he has worked on, um, you know, a Robot Chicken. He was a big writer over there, worked on the Star Wars parody stuff there, which I love. And then he also worked on Detours. Um, and so we had a great conversation, too, about the importance of still being able to laugh at Star Wars and have fun with Star Wars and even poke fun at Star Wars because that can be a connective thread. You and I can drop a silly little quote. And we, it's a shared experience, and that fosters an even stronger love of Star Wars. And I sometimes, because of the last two or three years, I do get a little defensive, mm. uh, trying to step away from that darkness, go back towards the light. Um, and that's one of the reasons every single word related to Star Wars of mine is, is, uh, is muted on, on uh, Twitter for me and has been for a while. Um, and, and so to go back to just the pure point of just going, that's still a little moment, that's still a little quote. This, you know, like that's the kind of stuff that also is important to remember. Star Wars fan and, and Kevin Chinnick, I asked him. I said, "You in the writers' room, Robot Chicken?" Like, it just seems you guys wrote that from point of like fans who loved this, who grew up with this, and were just hacking on Dengar. And he's like, "That's that's exactly what it was." And uh, yeah, about that. yeah. And 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 Flash one eight four eight seven. Thank you. You're coming over here on super chat now because I know not a big uh, Kylo Ren guy, but Obi Wan Kenobi, your favorite character. See, that's what. Is Star Wars. That's Star Wars. You love Obi Wan. I love Obi Wan. We love Kylo. You don't like Kylo. I didn't like you know Lobot for a while there. Lobot I thought was a dick. Ken, you know I didn't think like he did. He he did he did it dirty. He, he, he it. came out of nowhere. He oh. locked up Leia and, and Han and 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 set a trap. You know I'm sure Lando was in his ear. Right. And then he turned him on and Lobot came back. But at one point it didn't like Lobot. You got to. You now got I do. To. You got to read that five issue series. I know. I do want to read that. Yeah. You've, you've mentioned that before. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys, the uh, super chats are always appreciated. It's so appreciative. And uh, over on streamlabs.com slash Mark Riley, we can get those questions in. Lastly, Dan Risen here or Dan Risen. I don't know. I am not the biggest fan of The Last Jedi. He writes over here on Streamlabs. Uh, they write admittedly, but I do believe it has. One of the worst lines in Star Wars when Poe Dameron says, big ass door. Both of you being writers, how do you feel about cursing or real life slang being used in Star Wars? I love the uh, the question, Dan. Um, I'm not a big fan of the big ass doors either. I would have told Ryan Johnson, just I would have, as a writer, I would have cut that one out. What about you, Ken? Yeah, uh, that there's another example of it. What Rise of Skywalker did they say something to? Uh, I can't remember. Yeah. Uh, I I didn't like uh, Finn. Uh, you got a boyfriend, cute boyfriend. Read a little different for me, even though I love Boyega and what he brought with it. It, it, it was it had a spirit to it. I just didn't like it. Uh, and then there some of the newer uh, newer canon novels have that kind of stuff going on. And I haven't got as far into it, but I even think there is. I think the S word is in Queen's Peril. Um, I thought really? I heard it. see. Yeah, I wouldn't. Word. I'll Mark, tell you, Ken, it, being. Writing is one thing, and I remember this, and you remember back in the day, I remember when Christian and I started working on that Masters of the Universe thing, he sent me the old script first, yeah. and um, Tila asks He-Man, are you high? Goes like He says something in one of the lines. He-Man says, oh, we got to go do this. I don't know. We got to go save you know, Eternia. And yeah. she goes, are you high? And then another one was like, let's go get a burger. And another one was the, the S word. Are they on yeah. Earth? Are they on Earth? Are they in? No, they, they, they were not, and that's yeah. that was the they're, big problem with the script. They're in Castle Grayskull, and they're like, they were in, the, you yeah, get a yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. To that question, yeah, that that um, that's when it takes you out of it, in my opinion. Yeah, that's when, yeah, it's it's, but it's 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 definitely we're in a different era, uh, not just Star Wars, but just right. So, you know, so I don't, I it, it, but yeah, it wasn't it, like it wasn't it wasn't my favorite. It, it doesn't stick with me too long but but yeah it it's kind of one of those you know yeah i i don't think it's star isaac. wars or big ass door but you know it is it, what it is. yeah it fits with oscar isaac and poe and the character and everything like but but uh yeah in star wars it, it, i always say this it's got to feel like star wars but unfortunately for the creators of star wars we can't tell you what that really is until we see it <laughs> right and right. star wars and, now is is often running in so many different there's so many creators coming in now that get to, to, to play in that world. We mentioned Filoni, who's uh, the heir apparent 
according to a lot of the fans, and then you're talking about gallery. I love this, Kent, what he's saying. Mm -hmm. I remember the, the Mandalorian season one, episode one, he did the pilot. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought the pilot was great, but that there were better episodes and that I thought he found his footing a lot more later on down the line. And that I, that's the learning yeah. curve. Yeah, he did episode five and that's, that's my least favorite of the, of the series. Um, right. But it, ha but that said, this is the, the things, the buffet of star Wars you're talking about. Um, yeah. Like Shand is in episode five. I like that a lot. I do like some, a lot of the stuff going on on Tatooine and mm -hmm. then I love the Tusken Raider stuff. Um, right. It looks super great to me. The, 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 uh, the Tusken Raiders, this is an odd complaint. See, you don't know what it, you don't know what feels or doesn't feel like Star Wars to see it. The Tusken Raiders were too clean for me. Um, but that that re taking the, the trope of the Tusken Raiders, these natives of the land who were considered savages by the others, and and you know Anakin slaughters them, and you know they it, it, they they did obviously did a very bad thing to me. Um, right, right. To come around in Mandalorian and just re re. Recontextualize the Tusken Raiders and how you can approach them, how you can communicate, and how the Mandalorian approaches that versus uh, the, the other schlub that he was with. Uh, <laughs> I, love, I love that, and I love when you can do that stuff with Star Wars and go back and reframe something and, and add depth and depth to the story. And, and yeah, you know. yeah. Um, some people are bringing in, uh, you know, the idea of big ass door. See you in hell, Saint Han says as he rides off into the harsh elements of hoth looking for luke skywalker yeah. i think oh, hell be a more of a um hmm, a yeah. universal kind of word i don't know hell didn't rub me but maybe it's because i was young back then but that's the thing so let's say you're 12 and you yeah. watch jedi and you hear him say big ass door you're probably quoting that to your friends in office meetings in 30 years <laughs> <laughs> like we are when we say i'll see you yeah. in hell yeah yeah, see, see you in hell is one of my favorite lines, but I get it, and, and that comes up a lot of of um, you know uh, those kind of concepts of God and heaven are do appear in Star Wars. It was always weird when, when Holdo says God speed rebels, and people are like the God in Star Wars. Like, there's the original trilogy is chock full of those kind of references, right. um, and and that concept. Um, so see you in hell being perhaps the one side of the most. So I think that's you talk about the entry point into Star Wars. That's one of the key things about it and why it, it, I love that Star Wars is multi-generational now. And, yeah. and again, a little bit what yeah. Sequel Trilogy was, was about a new, hey, there's a new generation and they're going to have to come out from the shadow of the old generation of fans and you old generation of fans are going to still be in it. And it's a story of adapting or accepting or being part of that new generation. Right. Uh, the new generation. And it's, it's uh, meta in its own way. Like yeah. It. Yeah. Uh, Haskell420, thanks for this, dude. Uh, new Picard said, F a lot. I don't want that for Star Wars. No, I don't want it for Star Wars either. It would take me out of it immediately. I think I think a lot of people uh, understand that. Brian Jackson, thanks for the super chat, dude. Have you checked out Eddie Izzard's stand-ups on the Death Star's dining hall or cantina? Yes. Yeah. I haven't seen it in years, though. I think, wait, have you, do you know what he's referencing, uh, what Brian's referencing, uh, Ken? I uh, think so. I think I've seen it. Um, it's an older stand up, I want to say, right? Uh, Brian, um, because if so, I it's ringing a bell, yeah. There's some of that. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of Izzard stuff in a while, um, but yeah, uh, I haven't either. Ringing a bell. He's, he's usually really great, and I think it's what you're, what you're referencing, Brian. Then I have, and it's something I want to revisit very soon because it is the kind of um. It's when you're when you're poking fun at Star Wars and it's kind of the mundane stuff like that's why Ro Robot Chicken, one of my favorite bits is Vader calling the Emperor after the Death Star is blown up. I think it's one of the funniest damn things. Oh, ever. I talked to Shinnick about that. That's still one of the that's still. Yeah, it's 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 incredible. Yeah. It makes me laugh so much every every time. Um, Streamlabs, we still have more of them coming in. So if you guys want to get them in 10 more minutes before we're going to call it a day over on the 830 hour with Ken Napsock, this is Riley's Cantina. Have we gotten over to 100 likes on the video? And remember, hit that like button, keep going. You, you right there who hasn't done it yet. Thank you. Thank you. You just said like, uh, keep it coming. Drop in those comments after if you're watching later on. I so appreciate you coming in and uh, checking this out, what we're doing here. Ken, 
Aaron Parisian is coming in here on the Streamlabs, my dear friend Aaron. Thank you for this. Going into the wine account here, Aaron. Thank you for that. And she is writing, while I'm not a Raylo stan, I think an opportunity was missed with the relationship between Ben and Ray. Part of me, which is that someone who knows how to write a romance arc had been involved. Aaron, I'm winking at you because I know you know how to write a romance arc with your damn novels that you keep writing. They're so damn awesome. Uh, thoughts on the relationship, Ken, and how it played out for you. Um, yeah, you know what, Aaron? I, I'm i glad that there wasn't a relationship. Sorry, Ken, I'm going to answer first. Um, I'm glad that there wasn't. it didn't go all the way there because I didn't feel like that that was the story and I didn't feel like that that was what Ray and Ben were doing. But I understand when you set up like this connection that they had and that they had this um, in Last Jedi, they had something going on and there was some, uh, you know, Ken, when Adam Driver comes out shirtless, you know, Ryan Johnson knew what he was doing there. Getting us a little hot and bothered watching Ray and Ben talk or Kylo, I should say, you know, what are your thoughts on the relationship? Yeah, there, there, we've, we talked about on some force center, how the, how the new, uh, sequel trilogy does, does seem to lack some of the classic sweeping romance stuff. That's right. In star Wars though, I would argue the, the, Padme Anakin one is flawed on purpose and is part of that. Um, yeah. part of the, the, it's not as sweeping as you think the theme is amazing. Um, yeah. but yeah, there's a on both sides, I think. And it, we, we've can study that. Yeah. So I don't disagree with that overall. Um, that's why a lot of people, uh, would, would have wanted, uh, uh, you know, Finn and someone, whether it be uh, Finn and Rose or Finn and Poe sure. and other sure. people. We got flourishes. We got little moments, Rose and Finn, of obviously, and yeah, like you mentioned, Last Jedi, but Finn and uh, I forget her name in uh, Rise of Skywalker. It's kind of hinted at. It's getting there. Uh, uh, yeah, um, yeah. But to to the point, yeah, I, I don't think Aaron's wrong. Um, it just uh, look the journey to that point. There was a lot of discussion around the fact that wow, it was refreshing that Ray didn't need that uh, Ray's identity. Uh, not that she didn't need it. If Ray wanted to be in love, Ray deserved to be in love. Um, that it was, it was a different journey uh, for right. the character talking about different choices and everything. But yeah, star Wars, part of that is a serial adventure and flash Gordon stuff. Sweeping romance is part of it. So I'm, I don't disagree with that. It is. I don't think I, I don't think at any point would I have wanted them to be dating <laughs> for lack of a better right. term uh, during any points of the movie. So I was happy enough where that ended up um um because again for me for me as as, as a riff first of all the Ray, raylo raylo exists whether you, in, this isn't to aaron's point uh, raylo raylo just was not even romantically they're connected from the first moment they really meet that that connection is not about force powers it is but it's not about the force powers on the back of a trading card it is them <laughs> exposed to each other in the most intimate of of way that that fire scene in last jedi the touching the hands is probably the closest we'll ever get to a star wars sex scene and, unless you count some of the stuff in the afro comic uh, right, right. Um, not wrong dude uh, that is some of my yeah. favorite moments so, Romance, sure yeah. but it, it was deeper than that it was deeper is because they were both searching for something and there was this question why are they connected but they were it, it was they were always co connected yeah. um it makes me think of a uh a, a uh, the force dyad concept of the sequel trilogy, Brennan Marr, my friend, my patron uh, who put in that, that question, what are your thoughts? The we're talking about Raylo, the mm -hmm. fourth dyad concept of the sequel trilogy, which is oh, you know, there it is. <laughs> Ray was happy on her own. She was happy on her own. Ray was happy on her own until, until later, until she chooses. Yeah. But, but it, it, again, I just want to answer. I don't, I don't, um, I love good a good Star Wars sweeping romance. I would love Aaron to write uh, the tale of of Obi Wan and and uh, Duchess Satine. Like let let's hook it up. I would love to for Aaron to write Wicket and Princess Nisa. Uh, and uh, Ooh, Wicket getting it on. Yeah, look at that. How does Pomet come around? You know what? Tell me about the Ewoks and the bees. Um, and I. Uh, yeah, we we did miss a little bit of the sweeping romance, you know. Especially we had the Han and Leia. Han and Leia is classic Hollywood romance, I would say, uh, mm -hmm. as far as that era of Hollywood. Um, you know, we call and say, yeah. Um, we didn't get much romance in the sequel trilogy, but do you think it's uh, there's room for? I think a story like a Lost Stars. I love the idea of 
you know, we just watched Can't Buy Me Love the other day. Mm. Okay. I mean, that's just Romeo and Juliet, but, you know, in the high school world, you know, know, a little bit of Romeo and Juliet, you know, uh, different Shakespeare, but the classes, mm-hmm. the different classes. And so when you have Lost Stars, you have the Empire and the Rebellion and two people fall in love. I love stories like that. So you could do something in the time of Empire, like, you know, a rebel officer falls in love for an Empire officer, maybe Imperial officer, I should say. Or we go even deeper, you know, and it's like, hey, Ken, a Jedi falls in love with a sith now that wouldn't happen <laughs> oh well, wouldn't happen, uh, dark disciple dark disciple i never read it dark and i've seen some people there, say how much they love that book yeah how is that book it's really good uh, christy golden um yeah. who who's also was interested in the obi-wan satine stuff too um uh it was it's from the lost uh clone wars scripts that, that they weren't going to produce uh, that i think katie lucas had a lot to do with uh because she wrote all uh the asajj venture stuff nice so, um and and just made massage so wonderful yeah yeah so the, so the, exactly what you pitched is it's kind of there kind of there nice man well thank you for that aaron uh really appreciate the stream lab streamlabs.com slash mark riley if you want to get those in we'll answer the last questions as we wrap it up here at the 8 30 p.m on the pacific side of things ken knapsack before we do that where can people find you before we go at Cam Knox on Twitter, I have that in the link, and I have a link to why we love Star Wars over there on Amazon in the description of this video as well. What are you working on there, Kenny? Uh, right now, everything's uh, here in this very studio. Um, uh, so, yeah, one of the things, that, not that I'm hiding anything that I'm working on, cool, just this is what's going on. So uh, please listen to the Knapsack Files. Uh, I have a, a new show I've been doing called Saturday Night Knapsack, mm-hmm. uh, which I, I put, quite frankly, too much work into. Um, for the amount of listens, but it's not about that, right? It's not about that, Mark. We gotta no, just- it's not. <laughs> um, so I'm doing that. Um, and then uh, just go to kennapsack.com. You can buy the book. You can link link to it on Amazon anywhere. I got a couple copies left here at the house if you want a personalized copy. Um, and then uh, my baseball podcast, Box Score Heroes, which you can find. It's out there. I've gotten ready to launch it twice now and then uh real world events just kind of made it seem inappropriate to launch my yeah. baseball podcast and yeah. that's related to major league baseball um but now that the sport's going to be back for you know about two weeks before a bunch of players catch COVID and they and they cancel it and they uh, cancel it all over again right yeah um i'll be box box score heroes will be up which will be a full slate of shows full slate of shows it is everything outside it, 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 I want people who've never heard of me from Schmo Snow or Schmodown or Collider. I want I want new people listening to me, and we're going into the sports world with my love of baseball. So, box score heroes, check it out. I love it, Ken. Thank you as always for joining me, and thank you everybody for joining and hitting that like button and dropping in a comment or saying something kind. You know me; I, lo- I always appreciate it. And I did update or tried to update some of the uh, descriptions here. Uh, because I really do appreciate the kindness coming in. So, um, you know, uh, Taylor, when you came in here uh, for Chelsea, uh, I have the link there. If you do and you can help, the paisleyproject.org. The link is going to be in the description of this. Taylor, thank you for stopping by and at least uh, and, and sharing, you know, your experience and, and that what I do, what Ken, when he joins me, what we all do when we're talking Star Wars, we can make you uh, smile just a little bit when you're, when you're dealing with this. So I wanted to say that again, guys, uh, it's the paisleyproject.org. If you have something to give uh, Taylor and Chelsea Palmer, uh, Taylor's going through something rough. So um, whatever you can do to help, uh, appreciate it. I'll go check it out as well. But for the rest of you, thank you again for joining here on Riley's Cantina. Hit that like button if you haven't already. And uh, go check out my Patreon page, patreon.com slash Riley Roundtable this Wednesday upcoming. We have our development exec meeting. That's the $20 tier. All the good stuff that we talk about on the Patreon page that also goes in and funnels into the YouTube channel. That's with you guys. So check that out. Check the schedule. I'll be putting the schedule up for July. That's the writer's room, development exec, uh, schmo down hang, Sundays with Riley. Go to patreon.com slash Riley Roundtable. Snoop around. You might find something you might like over there. Ken? Love having you here, my friend. Appreciate you so much. Stay safe out there. I can't wait. We're like so close now. I'm I, I I'm in the valley, dude. I'm here. I you, made it. You've done what all people who grow up should do in LA. Move to the valley. I never thought I would do it, Ken, but then I realized it's so much better in the valley. Long time. It's a long time coming.
is a bad reputation because that's silliness. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah, man. Home. Welcome home. I love it. I love being here and I love all of you watching right now. Hit that like button. Like I said, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already check out patreon.com slash rally round table. And as always be kind to everybody out there, check out the YouTube channel. I will be doing some streams and this upcoming Thursday on my, a bigger boat show. Jason Inman is going to come in. We're going to talk about movies. We're going to talk about life. We're going to talk about all that good stuff. So that's this Thursday on this YouTube channel, Jason Inman coming in talking on a bigger boat but for the rest of you and for ken knapsack thank you for joining here ken stay on right here and uh we'll talk a little bit after but for the rest of you be kind be safe out there see you next time yes <laughs>